Welcome back. This is Business Center and of course we are speaking matters agriculture. Our question of the day today before we continue is what do you or can you do to maintain a healthy eating lifestyle? What do you or can you do to maintain a healthy lifestyle? Uh, continue uh, contributing to this question of the day. We are live on all our digital platforms and we will read some of your comments as we continue. But as I had told you earlier, we have our guest today, Emily Kathambi. She's here. She's a, she, she's a registered dietitian and nutritionist, and she's here to talk about more about this um, topic of today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm happy to be here. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Now, let us begin by discussing on the quality nutrition. How do you establish this? So when you talk about quality nutrition is knowing the food choices that you have, whether it's high quality or low quality. High quality can be like uh, whole grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, whereas low quality type of food is processed food, refined food. So generally getting to know the the quality of your food. As much as we do more of balance, you need an optimal health, so you need to know also the adequacy and the quality of the food. Mm. Yeah. And now with the COVID-19 pandemic here with us, yeah. how does someone um, make sure that they have quality nutrition? Okay. Now with the pandemic and the disruptions, how can you mm. advise on that? Um, based on now with the pandemic, uh, you find we have been able to be more at home and focus on preparing food. So preparing a meal plan for the whole household and also contacting your nearest nutritionist to be able to plan a menu to do assessments on your health. And then also um, to some extent asking people on how they can prepare home cooked foods as much as possible and eating a uh, fresh quality foods mm. uh, for, because in the pandemic you are at risk of uh, infections low immunity so you need to boost your immunity and a good immunity comes from also quality food and in general good nutrition all right yeah. and now adding on to that mm -hmm. how has um, the pandemic affected the nutrition of kids to be specific mm -hmm. because you find that kids um, they used to eat anything yeah. so how has this pandemic really affected it has it mm -hmm. um, realigned it or it has been even more worse I think at the moment with the public health uh, they have enabled us to be more clean in terms of washing your hands and also washing your food uh, this time round, we just don't give children anything. We actually want to pack their meals and also teach them on their nutrition and even carry nice snacks from home. So I think with the pandemic, it has improved the nutrition for the general household, not just for children. Um, for some people who are working from home, they have been able to prepare the actual meals to take the breakfast, which most of us uh, didn't get to do. Um, or to some extent, it's on the negative because if a bread dinner was laid off at work, mm -hmm. you find they, they take time to, to provide the adequate meals mm -hmm. in, in terms of uh, frequency and also the quality because Mfukondo in Asema to, to yeah. them, mm. yeah. So I think it has both positive and the negative. All right. Yeah. And now uh, the president recently um, mm -hmm. said that uh, now a drought is one of the national uh, disasters. Mm -hmm. How can one um, eat healthy on a um, budget. small budget? Yeah. Because you've said about the pocket, you know. Yeah. So how can you advise on one um, eating healthy and mm -hmm. on a budget and you ensure that the necessary nutritional values are, mm -hmm. um, are considered? Yeah, I think... Um, preparing a meal plan. A meal plan is generally knowing what you're going to eat in the morning, lunchtime and evening. And for children or uh, if you are working really intensely for snacks, so you need to know uh, basically from Monday to Monday or Sunday what you are going to eat and do bulk shopping for the groceries 
and um, in our aspect right now in the urban setup you find you can get good um, prices when you do bulk shopping as opposed maybe to shop near your home so uh, i think i can advise someone to to do a meal plan i can help them as a nutritionist to prepare a meal plan and then also do shopping in bulk so that we can have more food at a lower cost and also bearing in mind that nutrition is not that expensive because if you can get vegetables like cabbage even for a quarter uh, you can make salad with cabbage mm -hmm. you can make uh, with onions and carrots and that is around 30 shillings. A quarter is 15 to 20 shillings, carrot, five shillings. I think it's not expensive once it is in your mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now sticking to that uh, point mm -hmm. of meal plan, you know, it's not a, a really, um, what can I say? It's, no, it's not a popular yeah. um, thing that people are used to. Mm -hmm. So you find that someone says, uh, I'm going to wake up and take breakfast and then take yeah. lunch and then mm -hmm. take supper. Some people also just take one meal a day. Yes. So how can you advise someone who really doesn't mm -hmm. have um, time to make a meal plan? Because honestly, mm -hmm. meal plan for many people, yeah. maybe people who are living alone, who don't have families, mm -hmm. What would you tell someone who eats maybe t once or twice a day? Is is it really right or mm. what can you say about that? I would say um, getting to know your nutritional needs. So so that if you are just eating one meal, it means your lifestyle is a bit sedentary, like you are seated for most of the time. But uh, if you are very active, it will not be sustainable for you. Uh, though we know even the economic times, some people thrive on just one meal, but generally you need to know your nutritional needs and if you can afford it, just do a meal plan so that uh, you don't have nutritional deficiencies because at the end of the day, your immunity um, comes from whatever you are eating. So if you are eating one meal and maybe it's not adequate or balanced, you find that you will have uh, deficiencies in your nutrition mm -hmm. and that will take you to hospital and no one wants to be yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's just, uh, if you are that busy, you can ask me or uh, any other nutritionist to do a meal plan so that you can follow for yourself. Mm. Yeah. All right, yeah. That's, that, that's in order. Okay, let's get to the, to the shamba now. Mm -hmm. um, most often than not, our farmers spray fertilizers on the, on the crops. Yes. How does this reflect on the quality of nutrition we get from our foods? Um, so for fertilizers, you get uh, the crop yield is good. Uh, but to some extent, if it's uh, not organic uh, the, and the farmers tend to overuse because of you want a lot of yields, mm -hmm. So you might find uh, the nutrition for the soil is low. So if it's that vegetable that we're expecting to supply the nutrients, it will be a bit low. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would advise anyone doing farming to practice safe practices for farming so that you don't have a low soil uh, nutrient, which in turn will affect the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and now um, on, on the fertilizer, do you mm -hmm. find that maybe there are fertilizers that w sometimes you use mm -hmm. and um, they, they, over, they overproduce the chemicals and then they affect yeah. the, product, the, the product that is coming out. Mm -hmm. Now, on these pr uh, products that have been used, on, uh, they've been used by the fertilizer, yes. do they now come and help in the in the formation of the nutrition, or do you find now someone eats them but has to add more uh, value, uh, what is it called, vitamins to help in yeah. there? So uh, most of the plants uh, get their nutrients from the soil. So if the soil is lacking, either because of overuse of fertilizers or lack of good nutrition from the soil, mm -hmm. you will find that the food is lacking. So at that point, if we're in such an area, we can advise 
for you to get an assessment mm -hmm. on which nutrients you are missing and supplement. Mm -hmm. um, I would advise uh, people if they can focus more on organic fertilizers, the composts will help in returning the soil's nutrition. Mm. Yeah. And mm. now you've spoken about organic. Yeah. Um, is organic food fertile, uh, healthier than non-organic food? I think it's healthier because um, there's, uh, at some point there will be no reduced nutrients mm -hmm. as opposed to when you use uh, inorganic fertilizer which uh, increases the acidity of the soil thereby reducing the nutrients mm. yeah so because you find organic foods are really expensive they're yes. not they're not, not very cheap. they're not cheap so um do you do you advise for may, maybe everyone to go mm -hmm. to organic on the organic side and leave this other side or what mm. do you think because now someone may, might say if i go to organic side mm -hmm. i don't have the money to buy all yeah. this mm -hmm. yeah or what, what is there in, on this other side that mm -hmm. can supplement or that is more of, um, helpful to the body mm. than maybe going to the organic fully? Because someone yeah. can say, I don't have the money to buy all that. Okay, ideally uh, organic is good, mm -hmm. but um, because we are the same farmers, we are the same consumers, mm -hmm. so I would advise uh, a mixture of the two, of the two types of fertilizers. Um, that will help in reducing the cost and also if the government can be able to support more of organic farming mm -hmm. it would lower the cost but um, if you have a small uh, garden I think you can also do organic on your own small mm -hmm. garden mm -hmm. and doesn't have to be that you have a plot somewhere <laughs> you can do the ones that people do on balcony, on balcony yeah. the gunias, mm -hmm. the pots. Mm -hmm. I think you can still get good nutrition from there. Yeah. Mm, okay, that's yeah. that's. I, I really, I've really learned a, a lot about that because you don't have now to say, let me let me go to the organic one in the mm -hmm. supermarket, but you can also plant your yes. own. Yeah. All right. And then now, is it advisable to replace uh, medication with food supplements? Because we see people going for food supplements instead mm. of sticking to the medication. What do you uh, say about it? Mm, it's not advisable mm -hmm. to replace medication. Uh, in the first place, you are supposed to go to hospital, get diagnosed, and then get the medication. You can boost your immunity with um, supplements but also we uh, you need them to be recommended by mm. someone certified so that also you don't overdose on your supplements because you find maybe you are not even low on iron and you're taking iron as a supplement so i think it's not advisable to replace your medication mm. with supplements mm -hmm. and then supplements also are not supposed to rep replace your meals because uh, it's just a target of a certain uh, vitamin or mineral uh, but the food in general has other components that will help you uh, keep a good health and weight also mm. yeah yeah now speaking of weight uh, for example we say someone has said now I mm -hmm. want to lose weight mm -hmm. and I've, uh, now this is what I want to to be doing I don't want to be taking any uh, animal products I don't mm -hmm. want to be taking any anything like milk Mm -hmm. eggs you know so what is wh what does someone do at this point do they take only vegetables and fruits mm -hmm. or what wh what is the exact thing that someone has to do um, when you eliminate all that um, that could lead you to a strict vegetarian diet but um, you can still be able to lose weight with uh, having adding the animal sources of protein mm -hmm. Um, at that point, maybe I can do an assessment and get to know your needs. Are you overweight? Are you obese? Mm -hmm. And why are you uh, losing the weight? And from there, I can be able to advise you on uh, which foods to reduce. Let's say maybe you, are, you have gained weight and you also have uh, heart diseases mm -hmm. or issues just with your system mm -hmm. that's when we can reduce the animosities mm -hmm. yeah 
All right. And now th th there's this talk of GMO foods in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, people saying that is all we have in the supermarkets, mm -hmm. in the markets. So um, maybe on your on your in, in your opinion, um, mm -hmm. how safe are they, and how and can someone identify them? Um, I think um, some studies have been still done. So I can't say if they are safe or not, mm -hmm. but I think most of the foods are labeled if they are organically made or GMO. So it's good to read the labels. Um, it's not easy to identify them from face value until you just find out mm -hmm. more. But there's more studies being done for this kind of crops. I think for the consumer, the worry is um, having the altered gene passing or crossing to your own gene. Mm. So that's why I say I just do more research and also read the type of foods that you are eating. Mm. Yeah. All right. And now, what plants can maybe a farmer uh, be advised to be planting that are mm -hmm. good sources of vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generally, those are antioxid antioxidant uh, nutrients. Mm -hmm. Vitamin A you can find in green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. The spinach, carrots, pumpkins, sweet potatoes, they are uh, a bit high on those plants. Mm -hmm. uh, for animal sources, you can find in beef liver, fish mm -hmm. oils, um, eggs, yogurt and milk. Mm -hmm. For vitamin C, generally they are citrus fruits, mm -hmm. which are the highest, that is um, oranges, lemon, lime, um, passion. Uh, I think for fruits, they will take a bit longer to, to grow, but generally those are the highest. Mm -hmm. Vitamin E, you find in natural oils, olive oil, wheat jam oil. Um, you need also, you can take avocados, nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that you like, but almond is high. Um, we have peanuts, seeds. Uh, we have sunflower seeds, which are the highest. Mm -hmm. uh, pumpkin seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, generally right. those. Yeah. Okay. And now, what is what is the most important point to remember in nutrition? Like, what's what what is it that people overlook that yeah. is really important in nutrition? I think food choices, mm -hmm. um, most of the time you are just triggered by hunger <laughs> to eat, yeah, yeah. but I think at the back of your mind you should be having the food choices mm -hmm. so that when you go to purchase or when you go to eat, you should ask yourself, is it high quality nutrition or low quality and for how long am I going to eat like this? Even if um, I know we like meat in Kenya, <laughs> we like chips and all that. Just ask yourself: Is this food choice good for me? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And now, finally, mm. like, um, what can a farmer do mm -hmm. in order to make sure that they they give good yields? Because um, nutrition is impacted by the, what is it from the shamba. Mm -hmm. So what can a farmer do in order to make sure that, you see, now this is what I'm bringing to the table and mm -hmm. it's fresh and mm -hmm. good for someone to consume. Yeah. Any advice that you can give to a farmer? Um, I can advise them on, uh, if someone can do organic, the better. But if you can't do um, organic, try to mix the two types of fertilizers both organic and inorganic so that your soil is not lacking yeah and then also practice safe farming uh, practices like don't harvest before time or harvest immediately after pesticide uh, spraying and then also um, serving fresh rather than um, they, they have stayed longer in mm -hmm. the chamber and all that mm -hmm. yeah Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, that has been Emily Kathambi. Uh, she is here and she has told us a lot, a lot more about nutrition and as a farmer, what you need to do in order to make sure that your yields are fresh and good for consuming. Thank you so much for joining us today.
Thank you so much, Kevin, okay. for having me here. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, that, uh, that's it for our interview segment, but I, I hope you've learned a lot about the chips that we eat, the meat, nyamachoma, the chapos, and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, you've learned that we need to stick to more um, vegetables and make sure that we have a meal plan a meal plan for the week in order to make sure that we are doing the right thing. First, we're going to go to a short break, but remember our question of the day is, what do you or can you do to maintain a healthy eating lifestyle? What do you do or can you do in order to maintain a healthy eating lifestyle? Continue to uh, contribute to this question of the day. We'll continue reading them as we continue with the show. But first, we're going to a short break. We'll be right back with innovations and agri-facts. <music> 